Good morning. I'm messing things up because I'm going first. Good morning, church. Good morning. Good morning. So glad you've come to join us for worship this morning. I'm Pastor Katie. I'm one of the pastors here at Grace United Methodist Church. And this Sunday is World Communion Sunday, which means we celebrate along with several of our sister churches across denominations, across time zones. We celebrate that we are one in Christ. And you're going to see that theme throughout our worship service this morning. Special welcome to everyone who's joining us online. This is a perfect Sunday because we are united together, whether you're here or you're home on your couch or away on vacation, we are still one church together. So glad you're joining us for worship this morning. Feel free to comment and let us know that you're here and any prayer requests you may have. And so I'm gonna invite us to prepare our hearts and minds as we come to God in worship. I'm going to invite you to stand as you're able in body or spirit, and we're going to call one another to worship. When the world seems full of division, great creator, make us one. When it's hard to love our neighbor, great creator, make us one. When walls and borders separate us, great creator, make us one. When we close ourselves off to others, great creator, make us one. When we get it right, great creator, make us one. When we come together, great creator, make us one. When we are reminded we are part of something bigger than ourselves, great creator, make us one. When we ask others to join us at this table, Great Creator, make us one. I invite you to join us for our opening hymn, number 2236 in the thin black hymnal. It's Gather Us In.
seated. As we turn our hearts and minds to this time of prayer, when we come together in prayer of confession during our worship, we are acknowledging that even when we make our best efforts, we often fall short of being the people God called us to be. But we also know even when we fail, God receives us with mercy and grace. We bring our confessions to God to remind ourselves we can be better and be reassured that nothing can separate us from the love of God. I would invite you as we come to this time of prayer, sung and spoken, will you follow along with us in your bulletin. And holy God, we know you love each one of us, and you call us to love and care for one another. But we do not always love each other as you have commanded. We divide ourselves up, surround ourselves with others who are most like us, and erect barriers between ourselves and those who are different than us. We tell ourselves we are right and they are wrong. We refuse to offer welcome to those who come seeking refuge. We tell ourselves other people's needs and struggles are none of our concern. We make rules about who has a place at the table, who deserves to have their hunger and thirst satisfied, forgetting that at your table everyone is invited to come. We hold tightly to what we have for fear of losing it, even while others do not have enough. Forgive us, God, for forgetting we are bound up together in your love, that we are family. Forgive us for the ways we fail to care for one another and therefore fail to follow your example. Empower us to share generously of what we have and to welcome all, just as you do for us at your holy table. Embolden us to do better with your help and to come together as the holy family we are. In Jesus' name we pray. God's love and mercy know no bounds. Like two holy arms, they reach across the world, across time, across every difference and every divide between us. They gather us up in God's everlasting embrace and tell us over and over, you are forgiven. You are forgiven. Be at peace. Every Sunday we have our affirmation of faith, and this Sunday it is an affirmation of unity. For we know that we share one faith, we have one calling, we are of one soul and one mind, we have one God and Father, we are filled with one spirit, baptized with one baptism. We eat of one bread and drink of one cup, confess one name, and are obedient to one Lord, we work for one cause and we share one hope. 
Together we come to know the height and the breadth and the depth of the love of Christ, are built up to the stature of Christ, to the new humanity, know and bear one another's burdens, thereby fulfilling the law of Christ, that we need one another and build up one another, admonishing and comforting one another, suffering with one another for the sake of righteousness. Together we pray, together we serve God in this world. As we sing this response, I have to let you know, it brings back really fond memories for me in my former life when I was a youth pastor. This is the song that I would dismiss all of the children to when they headed out to their different activities. We're gonna sing it in the English translation. And I happen to know that the person who's about to come play the djembe has probably done it so many times because I've asked him every single time we sing the song. Thanks, honey. <laughs> And I really like this song, so I'm just going to warn you, we're going to sing it at least twice. And I may just keep singing even if the rest of us, you know, go on with the service. So let's sing together. We are marching. <laughs> If I could have the youngest among us come on up for the children's message. My children. Let's go. Steven. <clears throat> good morning, good morning. Like to sit really, really close. But that's not good. Yeah, so where are our chairs supposed to be? Oh, we do have the booster and wearing masks. Yeah, but where are our chairs supposed to be? Thank you. All right. So, have you all ever been to a party before? Yeah. Oh, yeah. Yeah, yeah. Parties. Yeah. What sort of parties have you been to? Let's see. Yes, Miss E.J. Okay. Um, birthday parties. Birthdays. I can't. Church parties. Okay. Yes, Miss Beck Beans. Sleeping late parties. We've had one of those. Okay. Birthdays. The sleeping late party. Hmm? And the party when my whole family just slept in. Oh, yeah. Late. Yeah, it was a party for me. It was yeah. a real heck of a party. Yeah. So we've, we've had birthday parties and wedding anniversaries, church parties, which we're having one today. Right? So what, made, what makes parties so special? Uh, we celebrate them. Okay, you're celebrating? We does, don't just fly around mm -hmm. on parties. The people who are with you, does that make it special? Uh, yeah, yeah, you're usually with family or friends, right? Are the locations ever special? Do you ever go like somewhere cool for a party? Nope. No? It's, is it always just at your house? It's at my house. I think that's a pretty it's cool place. Family. I really like going there. Yeah, yeah, those are fun places, right? How do you feel like how do you think you'd feel if you missed a party? Yeah. Not so great. I like a 
kindergarten party, then no thank you. Okay. <laughs> um, if we would like sad. the best. Yeah, you'd be world. sad. Yeah, yeah, no, it's not invited. I'll be like, eh, I don't mind. Yeah. There's always more. Yeah. But there's always the leftovers that everybody he doesn't use. Mm, yeah. So I just <laughs> use those so to make another party. Sight. So you're just so gonna make yourself your own party if you don't get to go to the original one. Yeah. It's very creative I'll, of you. I'll invite other people that didn't also mm -hmm. didn't get to go. Nice. So then, well. All right. So. Today, people all over the world are having a party, all in our own churches, but all really together. Do you guys know what we're celebrating today? Uh, nope. Nope? Then look over at the table, it'll kind of help you. What are we doing today that we do every first Sunday? Communion? Communion, it's World Communion Sunday. So all over the world, we're celebrating for World Communion Sunday. So hey. Jesus had a party, his la at the Last Supper, right? He took bread, he took wine, and he said, remember me, do this in remembrance of me. So we're doing that all over the world today. Oh, that's what this party is. Mm-hmm, so that's why we're having a party today. Party, party, <clears throat> So we are all connected throughout the world when we take the bread and have the cup all together, right? So let's pray. Can we fold our hands? Dear God, Dear God. thank you for your invitation. To gather, together, to gather together, to break bread and to drink from the cup. May we remember your body broken for us and your love that was poured out for us. And then one, two, three. Amen. amen. All right, so we're going to go to Children's Church, right? And we get to sing our song again as you all are headed out. who may be visiting today, I just want to point out that would be the pastor's children who didn't know what communion was. So we'll be having some refresher courses when we get home today. Our scripture reading this morning comes from the book of Zephaniah. That's one everyone read this week, right? Zephaniah? We're going to do Zephaniah chapter 3 near the end of the prophecy. Sing aloud, O daughter Zion. Shout, O Israel. Rejoice and exult with all your heart, O daughter Jerusalem. For the Lord has taken away the judgment against you. God has turned away your enemies. The King of Israel, the Lord, is in your midst. You shall fear disaster no more. On that day it shall be said to Jerusalem, Do not fear, O Zion. Do not let your hands grow weak. The Lord your God is in your midst a warrior who gives victory. God will rejoice over you with gladness. God will renew you in God's love. God will exult over you with loud singing, as on a day of festival. I will remove disaster from you so that you will not bear reproach for it. I will deal with all your oppressors at that time. I will save the lame and gather the outcast. I will change their shame into praise and renown in all the earth. At that time, I will bring you home. At that time when I gather you, for I will make you renowned and praised among all the peoples of the earth when I restore your fortunes before your eyes, says the Lord. For the word of God in scripture, for the word of God among us, and for the word of God within us, thanks be to God. Beloved, we come to this time in the service where we bring our gifts to God 
as a chance to be part of what God is doing in this place, the ways that we are extending the table so that all may feel welcomed and safe and invited. And so I'm going to invite the ushers to come forward at this time. God, for all the reasons we have to say hallelujah and give thanks this morning, you're grateful people. We are acknowledging that all good gifts come from you. Thank you, Heavenly Father. And all God's people said, Amen. Amen. You may be seated. So I'm curious on how you would describe God. Now rest assured, this is not a pop quiz. I'm not calling on anybody this morning. I just want you to start painting a picture in your mind. How would you describe God? What words would you use? With my upbringing, um, I spent a lot of time and still think of God as Father, using kind of he, him language. I mean, we say the Lord's Prayer, our Father, every week. Anyone else? 
had God as a, as a man. And I start to think of words like, like stoic or wise or patient. This is just my upbringing. And I remember in college when I first heard this passage from Zephaniah, and like you, I was like, Zephah who? But I was in a Bible study, and they read, The Lord your God wins victory after victory and is always with you. He celebrates and sings because of you, and he will refresh your life with his love. And my Bible study leader stopped at that moment and looked us directly in the eye and said, did you, did you hear that? God is so excited about you that God burst into song. And I, of course, was like, me? <laughs> no. I mean, the God of heaven and earth, the creator of all things, who can hold back the sea and causes the sun to rise, looks at me? and is so happy and is so full of joy that God starts singing. I still struggle to incorporate this side, this image of God, into my full understanding of the divine. I really thought about it this week. You know, I wonder, did Jesus ever laugh so hard at a joke that he started to snort? Like, have you thought about it? It says in Genesis that God walked in the garden at night, but did he also, like, chase the butterflies and pick the wildflowers? I bet that every wedding and bar mitzvah that Jesus went to, he was lord of the dance, literally, like, in the dance floor. And when the angels start singing in heaven, does God sing the alto descant? Is God thundering the bass line or more of like the ethereal soprano up there? We, we can debate this later, who, which part God would be on. Because the theme of joy is not one we usually talk about when we preach from the prophets. But I wonder if that's the key to unlocking the richness of Zephaniah. There's three chapters of warnings, these images of God's judgment and wrath. And then when Zephaniah is done laying this thick foundation to remind us of God's holiness, God's power, then comes this promise, and it feels a little out of place. Do not be afraid. Do not despair. For God is present among you, a strong warrior there to save you, one who delights over you with singing and quiets you with love. It's not the only time we see this imagery come up in the prophets. It's happened before in Isaiah chapter 62, where that prophet declares that you will be the stunning crown in the palm of God's hand, like a jeweled gold cup held high in the hand of God. And no more will anyone call you rejected or your country called ruined. Instead, you will be called God's delight because God delights in you and your land will be like a wedding celebration. So if it's not a mistake, then that means now we have to wrestle with these two images of God. A God who is full of power and glory, and a God who delights in us, holding us up like a crown of gold. And the same God who demands justice and a right way to live. And I think that these two sides of God are perhaps more closely related than we realized. Or if not, the sermon's about to be a bust. Because <laughs> God's anger and wrath in Scripture comes when we treat each other with malice or greed. Right? God's judgment will come for those who are oppressing the powerless and the weak. And God's joy will overflow, it says in Psalm 131, when we live together in unity. 
Or like that hymn goes, God will delight when we are creators of justice and joy. Zephaniah's prophecy is a cry to the people to stop living in isolation, to get rid of this idea that it's just all about God and me, so I don't need to worry about anything or anyone else. Because only when the people come together, when they realize they are interconnected, that there is this beautiful and this holy link between God and the church and community, the heart of a deacon ministry right there, that's when there will be singing and joy. Zephaniah says, in the end, I'm going to turn things around for the people, and I'm going to give them this language that is undistorted and unpolluted. I'm going to give them words to address God and worship, and united, United, they will serve me. Then they'll come from beyond the Ethiopian rivers. They'll come praying. All of my scattered and exiled people, they'll come home with offerings for worship. The precursor to God delighting over us with song. It is not trying to return to what is lost, It's not an isolating ourselves. The key to joy, I think, hinges on relationship. To name the connectedness and to lean even heavier into it. As I was preparing for this sermon, I had to read some commentaries because I don't preach on Zephaniah that much. And it was interesting because like the the Holy Bible of commentaries, we'll call it. Several authors coming together, and for their conclusion on Zephaniah, this is what they wrote about what they think the whole theme of the book should be. The interlinking of God and Israel and the nations under which Zephaniah presents this vision of the future. It's a challenge to any group or race or religion that wants to preach separation. In fact, Archbishop Desmond Tutu captures what truly causes God's people to rejoice and nations learn to live together in unity. And so now this quote from Desmond Tutu. They said, Africans believe in something that's difficult to render in English. We call it umbuto, means the essence of being human. Anyone who's at the University City School District this year, I believe, got a shirt with this big title on it, right? It means that you are generous, you're hospitable, you are friendly, caring, and compassionate. All words used to describe a relationship. Tutu says, you share what you have. It is to say that my humanity is caught up and intrinsically bound up in yours. We, are, we belong in this bundle of life, and a person is a person through the other person. And a person with Ubuntu is open and available to others, affirming of others, and does not feel threatened that others are able and good, for they have a self-assurance that comes from knowing that we belong to this greater whole. And the whole is diminished when others are humiliated or dismissed or tortured or oppressed or treated as less than. Powerful words from Archbishop Desmond Tutu. What a beautiful truth. The heart of Zephaniah and the heart of what I think we celebrate on World Communion Sunday is that we are made for this network of relationships. That I am incomplete without you and together we are better. And Jesus knew that. It's what we celebrate every time we come to the table. Every time we come here, we declare that we're connected. You can never have communion alone. And that it connects us not only here in this place, but to our siblings across denominations, across time zones, 
to the very ends of the earth, that the table is open to all, and it will unite us in God's love. We come to this table today from a world marked by division, by brokenness, by borders and barriers, and conflict and difference. We come from diverse backgrounds and lives, bringing our own struggles and our own hunger. We come feeling lonely or misunderstood, worn down by a world that so often tells us a story of separation, of hopeless disagreement. But this table does not belong to this world. This table belongs to God, to Christ, and it tells us a different story. The story of one who came in love, not for some of us, but for all of us. At this table, we are one, bound together in the love of the one who bids us to come who promises that brokenness and division will not have the final word, that there is space for all our different lives and stories and our particular hunger at this holy feast. When we come to this table, we are joined not just with each other, but with everyone who gathers at the table now and forever. And together we proclaim that the love that binds us is stronger than anything that might separate us. So let us come and feast on the promise of God. Friends, we are gathered together to share in the body of Christ, broken for us. Let us join now together, acknowledging the brokenness in our world and recognizing that Jesus embraces us all. As you hear these prayers, we ask you to respond by saying, Lord, have mercy. All are embraced at your table. And we will make a very dramatic hand motion when it is time for you to say that phrase. It'll be in your bulletin as well. So let us pray. To the God who sent your son so that his body might be broken for us, we thank you. As we gather to remember this act of love, we acknowledge there is still brokenness in our body and in our world. We ask that you have mercy on us, that we may continue to be the hands and feet of the one who was broken so that we might live abundantly. We participate in this abundant life through our hospitality, through welcoming all to the community of God. Lord, have mercy. All are embraced at your table. For those who have no food or shelter, who, because of greed and power, struggle to find jobs to feed their families, for those who work just enough to make ends meet, and for those who have lost everything. Lord, Lord have, have mercy. mercy. All, All are embraced at, at your table. For those who are denied humanity because of their skin color, their place of birth, gender or sexual orientation, for the unarmed people gunned down in the street by those who swore to protect them, for children separated from their families because they sought refuge, and for those who lost their lives at the hands of others ignorant in their way of love. Lord, Lord have, have mercy. mercy. All, All are embraced at your table. table. For those dealing with sickness in their bodies, minds, and spirits, for the ill, brokenhearted, and the hopeless, for those who have been denied health care and access to healing and means of hope simply because they cannot afford it, for those struggling with what it means to live, and for those who have lost loved ones to that battle. Lord, Lord have, have mercy. mercy. All, All are embraced at, at your table. table. In the midst of all that seems broken in our world, for only you can bring us together. Only you can make us whole. And so with one voice we pray together. Our, our Father, Creator, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. 
Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory forever. Amen. Perfect timing, the youngest among us, to remember that on the night he was betrayed, Jesus took bread and broke it and said, this is for you. There is so much brokenness, but I'm going to be part of it, and I will not leave you alone. And in the same manner, he took the cup and says, I promise there is a new world coming, and you're going to be part of it, and it's going to be a world of love where relationships are encouraged and supported and everyone is welcomed. So I invite all of those who are assisting with communion to come forward at this time. And in just a moment, we're going to invite you forward for communion as well. You're going to come down the aisles. We've got three stations set up here, and it's all gluten-free. Right, Mickey? Yes. Mickey has made our gifts today. It's all gluten-free. If you prefer, we'll also have a fourth station that has the prepackaged cups of communion in it as well. After you take your gifts, you're welcome to come spend a moment at the altar in prayer, and then you can return to your seats. The ushers are going to help us bring everybody forward from the back to the front, because the first shall be last and the last shall be first, or it just works easier for the flow of the church. Either way. Hold on. Let me just serve them real quick. And I love that you're excited for Jesus. All right. The gifts of God for the people of God come for all are welcomed here.
Holy God, we give you thanks for reminding us we are one broken and holy body in your love. Thank you for uniting us with other Christians to be your hands and feet in the world as one bread, one body. Throughout your life, you showed us how to live in community across differences, love in community, to worship in community, and in your final days to give us a new way to live in the example of giving your whole self in the Last Supper. You gathered with friends as well as those who wished you harm. You broke bread and said, this bread, this body, this community is for everyone. Let the story of love for all people be written on our hearts. Remind us to give our whole selves as we remember all those who gathered at this shared table and all tables throughout all times and places. Amen. invite you to stand as we come together to sing our closing hymn. Since you did so well last week with the turning of the page, I actually made it easier. And this, this week it's on the same page, but we're going to begin with 65, and you're going to do the first two verses in Spanish, and then you'll just drift your eyes to the left, and we will do verses three and four in English or you'll just hum along and God will love the singing and praising all together. So let us go to God in song.
want to invite you to do the most Methodist thing we can do, which is potluck time after church. Oh, I know our souls have been waiting for this. Everyone is invited to come downstairs right after the service, either follow your nose or the hordes and go that way, and you will find that there is a bountiful feast waiting for all of us to join together and celebrate. Now receive this benediction. May the blessing of our Creator who gathers our Redeemer who invites, and our Sustainer who breathes new life into our broken body be with all of us and at every table we prepare this day and always. And all of God's people said, Amen. Amen.